Good morning, boys and girls. So today we're going to be learning about famous inventors from around the world. These are the common core standards. Engineers improve existing technologies or develop new ones to increase their benefits, decrease known risk, and meet societal demands. Knowledge of relevant scientific concepts and research findings is important in engineering. A system can be described in terms of its components and their interaction. So today's learning targets will be recognizing different objects that have been invented, explain how the objects are significant in our daily lives, connect the inventor to the objects that they invented, determine and explain the meaning of an invention, and create a list of inventions that they use or can be used in classrooms and how they help to facilitate learning. Here's a little bit of vocabulary um, that'll be used throughout this lesson. So an inventor is someone who creates things for the first time. An artist is a person who paints or draws. A laboratory is a place equipped for scientific experiments. Research is collecting information about a subject. Scientist is a person who investigates different things. An astronomer is someone who observes the stars, planets, the moon, or anything in the solar system. A telescope is an instrument used to see distant ob objects. And a printing press is a machine used to print text or pictures. So we're gonna start our lesson with a quick little rhyme um, about inventors. So class, when you hear me say the word hooray, I want all of you to say hooray. Uh, all right, let's get started. So inventors, inventors, you made something new. You made our lives easier. A big hooray to you. It took Bell to make the telephone ring and Edison to light our way. It took Robert Fulton in a steamboat to chug chug down the bay. George Pullman made the sleeping car for railroad trips at night. Lou Waterman made the fountain pen so everyone can write. Inventors, inventors, you made something new. You made our lives easier. A big hooray for you. Good job, class. Thank you for participating. And now let's get into our lesson. So today we're going to choose an inventor that has invented something that you use in your daily lives. So it can be anything like uh, a computer, a phone, a uh, calculator, reading a book. All of those things are inventions. There's, it's something that someone created. And then we're going to write two to three sentences on how this invention is helpful. And after we do that, we're going to draw a quick sketch to go with your writing. And we have to remember to always check your punctuations. So today I brought a few things so that we can pass around to see uh, different objects that have been invented by inventors. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with these items that you use like on a daily basis. So here's an iPad. We have a calculator. We have a book and a printer. So boys and girls, this is just a few things that we use in our daily lives. Can anyone tell me uh, what would happen if we didn't have uh, a printer that can print books? Yes, Alexander. Good, yeah, we wouldn't be able to have books to use in our classroom. And this is a good learning material. So without this, it would be hard like to, to get through your learning experiences. Okay, good. So I'm going to go through and name a few inventors. So we have Thomas Edison, who created a light bulb. So you can see he's holding a light bulb right here. Who can tell me something uh, that they use light for? in their house. Samantha? 
Yes, yes, in your restroom. Anyone else? What other things can you think of where a light is used? Tim? Yes, exactly, a computer or a TV screen. You can see that there's light there too. So another inventor is Leonardo da Vinci, who he um, created a famous painting that I actually have right here to show you guys. It's the Mona Lisa. How many of you are familiar with this picture or have seen it somewhere? Julian? Yes, in a magazine, yes. Or some people like to hang that kind of artwork on their walls. And then another one is the telephone, which is invented by Alexander Graham Bell. So we all know what a telephone is, right? Yes, yes. And then, so if you look at this telephone here, does that look like a phone that your mom or dad uses today? No, no, it doesn't, right? So where's my, here's another picture here. But if you look at this one, this was like the one that was invented long ago. And if you look on this side, this one is what most people use today, which is a smartphone, which could be an app, an iPhone, or different types of phones that can be used today, but rarely do they look like this anymore. And then another inventor is Johannes Gutenberg, who invented the printer which is this machine right here. And how many of you can tell me what we use this for? Yes, Michael? Yes, good, so your dad uses that in his office. Yeah, so this is used for many things. You can print pictures, we can print uh, pages for a book, we can print worksheets that we use in the classroom, many things uh, that can be done on a printer. Can anyone tell me if the printer didn't exist? What, how might it be different if the printer didn't exist? Yes, Angel? Right, yes, exactly. You wouldn't be able to have books. Good, good observation. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you guys a quick little film about American inventors, okay? So let's pay, pay close attention and, and tell me if you recognize any of the ones that we already talked about. by Morse code contain dots and dashes to show the alphabet letters, numbers, punctuation marks, and other special characters. For example, this is how you would say hello in Morse code. transmit or send sound across electrical lines.
Okay, class, I'm gonna stop it right there. Can anyone tell me if they uh, recognized any of the inventors that we talked about? Yes, Amelia? Yes, exactly. The one who invented the telephone. And can you tell me his name, the name of the inventor? Okay, I can help you out. Uh, the one who invented the telephone, his name is Thomas Edison. Yes, yes. Good. One second while I get back to where we were. Okay. Welcome. Okay. So now, now that uh, you have some knowledge about inventors and like. From the video we showed, that's just a few boys and girls. We know that there, I mean, if you look around our classroom, there's many other things that have been invented that we didn't talk about. Uh, but of the ones we talked about, I want you to think about an, an invention that is significant to you or your family, something that you use uh, daily that's important, that if it didn't exist, then life would be totally different. Uh, learning wouldn't be as easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put together a short little story just to see, you know, the knowledge that you're getting from the information that I'm presenting to you. So here's an example. We're gonna write, Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb is important to me because and here's where you're going to fill in why it's important to you, how you use it, what you use. And if you want to write about how it's important to your learning, you can also do that. How it's important to your family, um, to your friend, to you, to anybody. And then, so the second sentence is, life would be different if the light bulb did not exist because... So then in this spot, you're going to tell me, why is it different? Why is it different? If it, if it didn't exist, why would it be different? So can anybody tell me, if the light bulb didn't exist, how would it be different? Yes, Miguel. Right, right, yes. Yeah. So during the day, like now, we don't need a lot of light. But once the sun goes down, it's hard because you need light you wouldn't be able to see. So uh, years and years and years ago, people would use candles before Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. Uh, people would use candles to light whatever they were doing if it was after sundown. Good, okay, good. So right now we're gonna actually do this together. But really quick, I wanna give you another a few other pieces of information. So let's start with Thomas Edison. He was born in Ohio. We already know he invented the, good, yes, the light bulb. And uh, a lot of his inventions, because that's not the only thing he invented, but we'll just keep on the light bulb. Um, a lot of his inventions had major effects on people's lives. Because like we just talked about, if we didn't have the light bulb, then we wouldn't have light. I mean, we use lights for phones, computers, uh, in the restroom, in the kitchen, in the, re the refrigerator has a light bulb. So life would be a lot different. And then we talked about Leonardo da Vinci. Can anybody tell me what he invented? Melissa? The painting? Yes, this painting. And the name of the painting is Mona Lisa. It's called the Mona Lisa. Good job. And during this time, does this painting look like it was in the present? Does this how is this how a picture would look today? 
No, okay, you're right. Yeah, so the time that that was made was called the Renaissance. So that was like hundreds and hundreds of years ago, ago excuse me. Um, and Leonardo da Vinci was born in Italy. Now we're gonna talk about Johannes Gutenberg. He's from Germany. Can anyone tell me if they remember what he invented? Samuel? This thing here, what is this thing called? It's a printer, yes. So back when he invented it, it was called a printing press. So it was a little different. It wasn't exactly like this. They actually had to do a lot more uh, work to get it, you know, going versus us, you know, we just push buttons and then the paper comes out and it's printed. Um, and this is one of the, all inventions are important, but this is a very important one because like we discussed earlier, it's used for a lot of different things. So pictures, uh, papers, teachers, we use these all the time to print worksheets out and, and uh, flyers, just different things. Very useful piece of uh, object here. And oh, another thing that I didn't mention. So uh, newspapers are printed and before, this was a long time ago also, before the telephone actually existed, we would use newspapers to pass information. So instead of being able to pick up the phone and call your mom or call somebody that lived in another state, we actually, they had to find out information from newspapers that were printed. So that's, that's really important to know also. All right. So now Alexander Graham Bell, can anybody tell me what he invented? Yes, John. No, not the Mona Lisa. Remember, that's Leonardo da Vinci. He invented another thing that, do I have anything up here? No, I actually don't. It's, some, it's, a, it's a device used to communicate. Yeah, to communicate. Yes. Yes, good. The telephone. Yes, so Alexander Graham Bell is from Scotland. He invented the telephone. And this is like a fun fact right here. So he uh, got an interest in sound and started looking into how he can create something because his wife and his mother were actually deaf. So that's kind of what sparked him to want to come up with something for people to communicate. And another fun fact is the first words that were spoken into the telephone was on March in 1876, guys. So we're in 2021. That was a long, long time ago. So that's a little bit more information to help you guys uh, get started on your writing. But we are actually going to go over it together. Um, All right. So we'll do this one together so you guys have an idea of what is expected of you guys. And then you guys will go back to your seats and I'll give you a paper and you guys will be able to do this on your own. All right. So we're going to use the example that we have there. So boys and girls, what you can do is use the top part for your picture. So this is where you can draw a picture. So let's say if we're talking about the light bulb, I would probably draw a light bulb here, or I can draw maybe a laptop and show that light comes out from there just use reflect on what we already learned and use that to help guide you and it's just a quick sketch boys and girls it's not going to be anything um difficult just something that you can do quickly and then so we will say thomas edison and then 
dimension of the light bulb. is important to me because and then can anybody does anyone want to come up here and tell me something that uh, the light bulb can do that is important for them good Sam come on up So go ahead and write your idea. And we can't forget our period at the end of the sentence, boys and girls. Good job, Sam. So Sam says, Thomas Edison's invention of the light bulb is important to me because I need it to see. Yes, that's a very, very good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's a very good reason. He has a very good reason to need the light bulb. All right, so let's go to the second sentence. Life would be different. light bulb did not exist because okay can I have someone else come up and tell me what uh, why life would be different if it didn't exist Julian okay good come on up Okay, nice job. Don't forget your period. So just like that, boys and girls, um, let's read Julian's really quick. Life would be different if the light bulb did not exist because I would not be able to see in the dark. Good, good, boys and girls. Thank you for those who came up and helped us out. So now... I'm going to give you guys a piece of paper and you guys will work on your own little story. So think of an idea. It could be the ones we talked about. If you know of another invention, you can use that. But just come up with a couple of sentences of why you think it's important. So boys and girls, if you need a little bit of a refresher, here are a few things that I brought to show you guys, just to give you an idea. We didn't talk about the inventor of this, of the calculator, but these are other very important um, learning tools. What do we use this for, boys and girls? Math, yes, exactly. And then we have our iPad, which is really good also um, to use in the classroom. Lots of classrooms now provide students with iPads, which is a really good uh, learning tool to help you guys. So here are a few things that, uh, a few ideas that you might want to write about, okay? So I'm going to come around and take a look as you guys are working. You guys can interact with your uh, table partners if you guys need some ideas or 
if someone asks you a question, you guys can help each other out. Good job, Julian. I see you're already getting started. Good. What do we do uh, first as soon as we get our paper, boys and girls? Yes, put your name. Thank you, because I'm not going to know who it belongs to if your name's not on it. Okay, so now that we're done with this, we are going to share a couple of stories, okay? So whoever wants to volunteer to share their story, raise your hand. Okay, good, Michael. Go ahead, read your story. Nice, yes, I like your idea. Michael said if we, if the book didn't exist, then we wouldn't be able to read. A lot of people like to read. Uh, a lot of us use these to learn, like if it's a math book or a language arts or social studies, a science book, those are all things that have been printed. So if the printer didn't exist, none of that would be available uh, for us to use as a learning tool. All right, nice. So we're gonna kind of just do a little recap of anything we learned in our lesson. So by a show of hands or by raising your hand, um, just tell me one quick fact that you learned. Okay, Melissa? Yes, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. All right, next, Michael? Good, books would not exist if uh, the printer never got invented. Uh, Samantha? Yes, yes, you need a light uh, to see when you're doing your work or to watch TV. Good, good observations, boys and girls. All right. So now we're going to do a quick little activity where we are going to list a few of the items that we talked about. And this activity is called Then and Now. Does anybody know what we're trying to do with this activity? If I'm saying then and now, what do you think this uh, activity is gonna include? Yes, Angelica? Good, yes, yes, perfect, yes. She said we're gonna compare to see how these products have changed from when they were invented to now in, in today, today's time. So first we're gonna start with the telephone. So you're, you remember you're familiar with this when I showed you um, on the PowerPoint that this is what a telephone looked like many, many, many years ago. And now this is what it looks like. So looking at the physical features, how does it look different? I want you guys to tell me how it looks different. So for example, if we look at this telephone, I can say um, there's many different parts to it versus just holding one part. Like for this one, you actually have to pick this piece up and then you have to dial or there's other ones that are uh, different shapes and you actually have to like push buttons and it's a little bit more of a process. So what are the physical features of this one? It's big, good. That's a good observation. Anything else? It looks weird. <laughs> we can put that. Any observations on this telephone? Nothing else? Yes, Alexander? 
many parts. Okay, that's what we talked about. Yep, it has many parts. Now let's go over to this one. And what can you tell me that looks different from that? Yes, Julia. It's a rectangle. Okay, good. Any other observation? Samuel? It has lots of buttons. Yes. Lots of buttons. Anything else? Yes, Angel. You can see pictures, yes. All right, that's good for that one. Let's move on to this one. So, like I mentioned earlier, candles were used before the light bulb was invented because that was their source of light. And that's like the only thing they had available because this hadn't been invent invented. So what can you tell me about this? Julian? Good, yeah, it's a candle. Anyone else? Jeffrey? Yes, yes, you're right. You need matches to light it. So we'll put, we have to light it. Any other observations? Eric? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, it's used on a birthday cake. Okay, so now let's move to this side and what do you see that's different? Melissa? Good, yeah. You have to connect it or you have to screw it onto something. Any other observations? Yes, that's right. There's a little piece of metal, like a little thing inside that helps it generate light. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this is a piece of art. So we know that this is who? Can anybody tell me what this art is called again? Yes, Jeffrey? The Mona Lisa, yeah, it's the Mona Lisa. All right, so looking at this, what can you tell me? Anybody have any observations? Eric? It looks old, okay. And one more observation on this one. She looks serious, good. Yeah, back many years ago, people didn't smile for pictures. So this it was more of a serious look. And um, for art today, what do you see that's different? Yes, she's smiling, good. Okay, boys and girls, those are really, really good observations. I can tell that you guys were paying close attention and listening to all the facts that I presented you with and using all of your tools to get ideas. And this. So we already did this. We created a chart of how inventions have changed from the past to present. Um, you guys shared your ideas. Um, and all these tools that we use actually make, uh, it helps to facilitate your learning. It helps you guys um, 
be able to reflect and then put it on paper or um, another good way to build on top of what you learned. You guys can go home if you have access to um, the internet. You guys can look up, I mean, many, many different um, inventors. There's so many things that you guys can learn. So that's like a good way to build on top of what you already know. So now it's game time. We're going to play a quick uh, game of bingo. So it's called Adventures Bingo. So I'm going to give you guys a board. And for this bingo, we, uh, we're only going to do, it's more like tic-tac-toe, but I see, I'm, I'm saying bingo. So if you get three spaces in a row, you guys can call bingo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the names of the inventors and you're going to place your, where's my, these are chips to use on your game board. And as soon as, when I call the names, you're going to place the chip on there. Um, and when you get three in a row, you say bingo. Does anyone not know how to play bingo? Anybody not know how to play bingo? Okay, good. So you're all familiar with it. Okay. So here's your game board. Call up, call, call out the names of the inventors. You guys place it on your um, bingo card, and as soon as you have three in a row, you yell out bingo. Galileo, Galilei. So think about what I'm saying. Galileo, Galilei. Sound it out. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the name, just try to sound it out. It starts with the G. Thomas Edison. I know a lot of you are really familiar with that one. Thomas Edison. Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. The one who is responsible for the Mona Lisa. Leonardo da Vinci. Alexander Graham Bell. That's a long name. It has three different parts to it. Alexander Graham Bell. All right, Melissa, you have bingo? Okay. So repeat the names of the inventors that I mentioned. And we'll check to see if that's correct. Thomas Edison. Yes. Alexander Graham Bell. And Galileo Galilei. Good job. All right, boys and girls, thank you for being good listeners, and this, this is the end of our lesson.